Hello, good evening and welcome back. So, Jess Phillips is out. <laughs> the horse has left the race. How fantastic. Well, maybe not if you're hoping Labour to have such a worse feat than they did, even worse since 1935. But nonetheless, as the headline reads here, Labour leadership Jess Phillips quits race to succeed Jeremy Corbyn. <coughs> yes, another woman out. So, <laughs> Keir Starmer still remains as the only man. And I mention this because gender is so important to these people who seem to think that that is everything. Not realising, of course, that historically the reason that that is the case and why men are more memorable is that there is such a fraction of men who are memorable because they are that expendable. Men do not value their lives, that is why more of them commit suicide. They are too concerned about saving the lives of their families, their brethren, and the women in their lives. They wish to provide for their partners, and when their partners are taken away from them, that is it in life. Uh, they could almost be seen, if you wish, that in, in the Garden of Eden to go biblical, that surely that would have, <laughs> that, that, that deceit, I suppose, from, from Eve would then was having to lose everything and go, well, what's the point? But nonetheless, he does still have his, his partner, his wife, his, his, his brother, and it is a rip from him, and therefore chooses to live on because at least he is her and has that obligation, that duty to provide for her. And that is the case here, that you might call it a patriarchy, if you will, but just if you look back on where we've come from and what men have done in order to keep the rest of their family safe, their country safe, in particular if you look through to Victoria Cross winners like Major Robert Kane, um, showcased by Jeremy Clarkson, of course, then it gives an example of what has been gone through in order to keep that, that sanctity of life and ensure a life well lived for everybody else. And that is why historically that has been the case. And especially when you go into the bravery shown by people with VCs, when it comes to these political contests and, oh, I'm being brave and I'm facing up to saying, <laughs> facing up to someone who said they won't even rate me. Oh, I'm so brave. <laughs> Fuck off. You know nothing about what bravery means. Don't even pretend you do. You are so misguided. And even with what you think you are doing, it's still not even close. You support, and this seems to be the Labour Party as a whole now, especially their front runners, including Jess Phillips, enemy of British people. They are the enemy of Britain. They will side with any Britain's enemies. She cites herself as, of course, the Labour MP for Birmingham Yardley and says, ah, oh, well, <laughs> Birmingham is great, it's so multicultural. Yes, only a third of their students are English. A third who actually supported this level of mass migration. Well, nobody who was here when it started <laughs> goes recent as 30 years ago if you want. Of course, they would not support that and say, hey, so in 30 years' time, would you like to be the minority? Would you like just a third of your school children to be white English, your, your brethren, your community? No, no, of course not. But, of course, she perpetuates this, pretending that Britain is a country of immigrants and that's what makes Britain great, <laughs> saying that herself. So, are you conflating us with America, which is a much more recent invention? Uh, you can go with 1776 if you wish to have the declaration of independence from England because we are largely unchanged for the last thousand years. What you're saying is, is patently false. It is not true at all and you always side with Putin's enemies and if you wish then how many more English girls need to be raped by invaders essentially as in people who think they are taking over an evil country and then taking the spoils of victory by raping their women. How many more need to be the victims that you, you support them being victimized? You support the rapists for you to say, hmm, maybe this isn't working. 
as I've mentioned many times before, even Angela Merkel said that multiculturalism was a failure. So thankfully, Jess Phillips has stepped out of the race, but those sentiments which I've just stated still reside. People who wish to undermine what it means to be British, who wish to undermine British ethnicity, and who wish to undermine everything that is important to Great Britain, to the UK. That was right. Labour Party, <laughs> Jess Phillips again, saying, well, clearly immigration is good and we should be taking care of these people from other countries. I'm thinking, well, no, we shouldn't. You can even go through it from a left-wing perspective to say, well, no, this is classism. We don't want it to be a buyer's market for the, the billionaires and the, the globalists, the international corporations, to say, well, we will take whoever we can hire the cheapest. And because the labour market is so saturated, now we can drop our wages accordingly. The same as when women were allowed to work, which translates to women have to work, it takes away their freedom, funny enough. And that's what we've seen. Examples being, of course, Eastern Europeans and, and Polish, and the Poles who've gone back to their countries, who had particularly saturated the labour market, as in building and construction, and now those wages have increased dramatically because it is a seller's market. It is the people who are doing the work who can say, well, actually, no. If you want me to do this, you're going to have to pay me something more. To which contractors will have to say, well, mm, we don't want to, but no one else will do it, so we kind of have to. Well, yes, of course. So, Labour, if you wish to actually help the working class, that would be a very strong argument for you to be against this level of mass immigration. You're not though, which means you don't wish to help the working class, as you were originally apparently set up to do. Your socialism is, as George Orwell said, just envy of the rich. And you wish to just do virtue signaling instead of actually helping people. So, what it means, as she's dropped out, as she hadn't had any union support before, doesn't really matter from that perspective, but of course it does narrow the field to four main frontrunners. And the unions are getting more involved as time goes on until the voting begins in February. And what that means is that, as Ms. Phillips has said, that she needs someone to bring the Labour Party together and hopefully the country as a whole, and that person is not her. At least she did have that level of uh, self awareness. She says that that is not her. We've had other movements with Lisa Nandy's campaign receiving a major boost after she won the backing of the GMB union. The organisation also backed Angela Rayner to be the next deputy. Announcing his decision to endorse Ms Nandy, the union general secretary, Tim Roach, said she was a breath of fresh air in the debate over Labour's future and got the scale of the challenge facing the party after its fourth election defeat. In all though, get ready for a fix. The endorsement increased the chances of the MP for Wigan making it to the final stage of the contest, joining Sir Keir Starmer, who is already qualified to get on the ballot. But we will see the, the, the crops and the likelihood going by the, um, the betting companies, who of course have it in their own best interest to be correct, think he's definitely going to win. And it's funny, isn't it? Especially for a party that says, oh, we don't like capitalism and the idea of making money. It's like, right, so whose polls are you going to trust? Are the betting companies? Why? Because they're financially invested in the results. Oh, hang on. You mean money is a fantastic motivating factor for people to achieve more? <laughs> well, hang on. That destroys our narrative completely. Well, well, yes, it does. I'm glad you realise that you're wrong then. But you're still going to keep banging that drum. Because it's not about doing the right thing. It's about sounding like a virtuous person. And that is why you will continue to fail. So Miss Nandy, who already has the support of the National Union of Mine Workers, as if that's useful anymore, considering that we're moving on from mines, said she could not be more proud, and the next leader's challenge was to recover our ambition and inspire a movement. The other candidates still left in the leadership race are Shadow Business Secretary Rebecca Long Bailey, who has been tipped to get the backing of the United Union later this week, and Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornberry. So we have the four front runners here Rebecca Long Bailey, Sakir Starmer, Lisa Nandy, and Emily Thornberry. Ms. Phillips missed the hustings organised by the GMP earlier on Tuesday, prompting speculation that her campaign was in trouble. So, she's saying she's still going to be a strong part of the Labour Party. Brilliant, you will help to run it further into the ground. 
kids that are not saying, oh yes, well done, thank you for dropping out, but it has no effect. Then again, of course, seeing as she, believe it or not, she wasn't as radical as they come, as Thornbury, for example, uh, this could actually help him. He could actually gain a percent. Um, none of it's really going to go on to Emily Thornbury, as Ian Watson here points out. So she says, it says here, that Jess Phillips has dropped out, but she says her encouragement for people to join Labour in order to change it has worked. Tens of thousands of new members have come in, so she may use have an influence on the result. Her supporters are highly unlikely to back the most left-wing candidate, Rebecca Lock Bailey. Which is reassuring if Labour get in, but a bit disappointing because if she was actually the leader, then they would never get in. So here we have here, according to the betting odds, Star McCarley at 70%, well above the next uh, not Bailey at 21%, the two opposites of the party, if you will. So it's going to be another male leader, um, because even with their quotas, even with the decks stacked in their favour, they still can't manage a woman to do it. It's almost as if the party that encourages people just to do the best that they can and achieve based on their merit actually encourages more capable women, whereas the one that has to rely on quotas aren't actually that capable because they've never had to rely on themselves and prove themselves in a theatre of meritocracy where it matters most. Which is why the Conservatives have had two female Prime Ministers and Labour have had zero. Because when a party doesn't care about gender, actually some women can lead it. Obviously, <laughs> Thatcher and May really are not similar, but nonetheless, for, for these top pots, Gender is all that matters. So they say when she entered the contest early this month, Miss Phillips called on those who wanted to change Labour's direction to join the party in the thousands. She insisted she had the big personality in the face to alter how Labour was seen by the public, but she criticised her own performance in the first members of plastics last week at the Liverpool. Some self awareness, well done. So as we see here of the calendar of how things will unfold, uh, we've had all the nominations done already. So the ballot opens for who they want to vote, um, who they want to lead the party on the 21st of February, so in about a month or now, in fact exactly a month from now. Then they have the voting, voting all throughout March, with the closing of the ballot on the 2nd and the results on the 4th of April. Look forward to some April 1st votes. And then we will have who will be leading Labour uh, to failure in the next election. Uh, most likely it will of course be Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, with that in mind I will do a more in-depth video of him when the time comes, but they aren't a threat, they aren't important, they aren't relevant at all. Um, Labour is failing, and that is nice to know, because hopefully what that will mean is the Overton window will shift to the right, and this may not be possible even our wildest of dreams, but the hope is there, that then the Conservatives will take their place as a centrist, slightly left-wing party, as we all know them to actually be, both socially and economically, and then they will spring up an actual right-wing party. Some of them will say, you are responsible for your own future. We're going to have a flat tax and a marginal tax. We're going to have smaller government. We're not going to care about race or ethnicity or gender. We're going to allow individual freedoms to be able to choose to defend yourself, um, choose your own health provider as well won't force you to do things that you don't want to do, or pay for things that you don't support. Uh, actually, a, a libertarian or <laughs> right-wing party, as I say, they may even then, which would be ideal for me, decide to say, because you can decide what you want to do, and we're not going to force the NHS to support you because we don't care for the NHS either, as well as scrapping the licence fee, of course. If it's not gone by then, which it bloody well should be. If it's supposed to be safe for another eight years, bloody hope not. At least decriminalise people who don't pay it, that's what you can do. But they will say, okay, in that case, we will of course legalise drugs for you to use and take and consume, and then you can decide, given that transparency, who you wish to support, um, in terms of whether or not you think their drugs are, are mixed and clean enough for you to consume, um, or if you don't. And if things of course continue to decline, then, it's like, well, then there are underlying social issues, in which case we're going to drop out the welfare state, 
specifically for single mothers because parents being together is most important and we're going to discourage women from having children if they don't have a husband there to support their children uh, because that is terrible for the children and we don't wish to pick up the slack on helping your child to survive just to then be a parasite in society and cause crime and destroy everything that other people have tried to create. Of course they'll be called out for racism just because that um, because black families tend to be more broken than white families but hey <laughs> this is England we care about meritocracy and we don't care about race. If your communities have that problem that's for you to figure out. Why don't you incorporate the church more and have people who know you, understand you and believe in you to support you financially because at least then you can get the targeted support. And on top of that, the people are paying less tax so they have more money to give to the charities and that means they can help you out with contributions as well. Which means that they're going to be happier giving their money away like that they're not going to think of it as being taxed, but they choose where it goes, and you're going to get the targeted help you need from people who know what they're doing. It is a win-win, and for any party who wishes to go down this route, I strongly recommend. We don't say, we're cutting these social services. We say instead, we're encouraging communities to flourish, and you are allowed to support whoever you want to support, and actually know where your money is going, and have that effect that you know it is having, instead of it just disappearing from your paycheck. Now, you have the ability to change people's lives. That is the message you have to be pushing. Of course, Labour won't do this, but I'm just speculating to say, when Labour crashes and falls and disintegrates, and we hope that happens soon, if the overturn window shifts to the right, that creates that power vacuum for an actual right-wing party to come up. To show the importance of the family unit, the importance of the freedom of choice to spend your money on what you want and the importance on being able to protect yourself because the government is too slow and inefficient. But until then, have a good one.